Right. They, they reconstruct. Well, it's beautiful. I, it's, yeah. it, it's what we can do now with yeah. technology. Right. You know? right. And it's, it's just the most amazing kind of stuff. I, I, I want to ask you about a different document. Go ahead. Um, as some politicians around the country try to erase black history. During today's discussion, Sonny Hostin often brings up race, related issues at every possible opportunity, sometimes without fully considering their relevance to the ongoing discussion. When an iconic figure like Morgan Freeman is invited to speak on a specific topic, like his new documentary Life on Our Planet, the focus should remain on the subject matter instead of diverting to conversations that may make the guest uncomfortable. Freeman in particular has expressed discomfort with race, based political viewpoints being imposed on him solely due to his skin color. In this case, the panel missed the opportunity to honor Freeman's presence by centering the discussion on the incredible four billion year journey of Earth species, which was the purpose of his appearance, instead of sidetracking the conversation. The panel's failure to maintain focus ultimately did a disservice to Freeman and his documentary's rich content. Let's check it out. In your career that spans almost six decades, uh, you've done really cool projects. But this new series, Life on Planet Earth, is remarkable. What drew you to this? You want the truth or should I make something up? No. Go with the truth. <laughs> Which one's more interesting? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm one of those people who's very, very interested in this subject, life on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm. You understand that today, life on the planet is in a little bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. And we're the cause of it. That's right. There have been, if I remember correctly, six extinction level events mm. on the planet since life began. Mm -hmm. I mean, six times, large, large portions of life, not human life we're talking, we're talking just life mm. gone destroyed yeah. we're headed for another one mm. scientists have said if we don't hurry up and change our ways there's going to be a cataclysmic event mm. that will wipe many of us off the face of the earth god isn't it ironic how morgan freeman asked the panel if they wanted to hear the truth or something more pleasing Freeman may have anticipated the panel's reluctance to handle views that challenge their own. Instead of focusing on Freeman's documentary, Life on Our Planet, and its fascinating exploration of Earth's history, the panel tried to steer the conversation towards politics, specifically environmentalism and race relations which conflicted with Freeman's usual approach. While it's easy to frame a doomsday narrative around climate change, Freeman's message likely aimed for a deeper understanding. Extinction events like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs happen over millions of years, offering a broader perspective that challenges the alarmist rhetoric. Yes, anthropogenic climate change is real, but in the grand timeline of human evolution, it's only been a factor for two centuries, with global warming estimates between two to four dec. It's an issue that requires serious attention, but not one severe enough to justify the extreme often anti-human stances that modern anti-human stances that modern environmentalism can take, as Joy Bihar seemed to suggest during the discussion. Freeman's calm, insightful perspective was overshadowed by the panel's political agenda, missing the opportunity to dive into the remarkable history his documentary aimed to highlight. You look back, and this series does that, how far back does life exist on this planet? And why does it still exist? It is because life is tenacious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Life. We're not talking about human beings here. We're talking about the planet. Yeah, yeah. She'll stay. Yeah. Well, it's tenacious if we would just leave it alone. Leave it alone. I and mean, the human can, can uh, 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 you know, interruption of all of that is what's causing all the problems. I hope that it's not too late. But let me ask you this, Jim. Did you, did seeing the rise and fall of all these species, because some are coming in too, right? Mm -hmm. And many are leaving mm -hmm. the planet. Mm -hmm. Did that change your perspective on life? My perspective on life? I don't think it changed my perspective. It just enhanced it. Mm -hmm. Because for a long time now, I've been listening to what they say about, you know, I drive an electric car. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
Me too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and no, it did not change my no. perspective. No. You've always been concerned. Uh, well, yes. Yeah. Uh, always. It's relative. Uh, how far can you go back with always? You know? yeah. yeah. You can see what Joey B. Hare was trying to do. Attempting to draw Morgan Freeman into a political debate by framing it as a change of mind. But Morgan handled it masterfully, calling it an enhancement of his vision. That's why Freeman described Mother Earth as tenacious. Over 99s of the 5 billion species that have ever existed on Earth have gone extinct in its 4.6 billion year history. This fact shows that while life is fleeting, the planet remains resilient and adaptive to the changes of its inhabitants. Freeman's documentary reflects this broader, more balanced perspective. Earth is not a fragile victim but a survivor. Those who truly understand his message would recognize this. On the other hand, some far-left environmentalists treat the planet as the primary life form and paint humans as the ultimate destructive force. Their extreme views have even led to radical movements advocating for voluntary human extinction to save the planet. An absurd stance when you consider who exactly they're trying to save it for. Sunny Hostin, not missing a chance, jumped in with her usual approach trying to cast Freeman as a victim. And tempting to pull him into a social and political narrative he had no desire to engage with. Instead of focusing on the profound message of Earth's resilience, the panel seemed more interested in steering the conversation toward divisive topics, missing the deeper point Freeman was trying to convey. I want to ask you about a different document. Go ahead. Um, as some politicians around the country try to erase black history, mm. you're making sure people don't forget vital parts of our past, yeah. including this documentary that you executive produced called 761st. Did I get that right? Yes, yeah, 761st Tank Battalion, the original Black Panthers, yeah. mm -hmm. oh. about the first black battalion to fight in World War II. First black armored battalion. Yes, yeah. and you served in the Air Force. I, I know that. Um, this film was then very personal to you. Oh, yes, okay. heavens. Um, I, movie buff from early childhood. I saw my first movie when I was like six years old. Mm. Uh, it was um, King Kong. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um, but I just, movies, movies, movies. Yeah. yeah. And you know, start in the 40s and move up. And how many times did I see black people in the movies? And if I did see them, mm -hmm. what were they doing? Yeah. They were, <laughs> yeah. They yeah. were servants. Servants. Like, they were always, kind of I know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, appalling. I can give you the name. If you watch the, old the, movies, yeah. Betty Davis movies are particularly, even though she's great, the, and it's the period. It's not her time fault, it's the, the period. Yeah. It's, it's, it's upsetting to watch, doing. tell you the well, truth. Well, uh, it shouldn't be that way it because is. somebody did make money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now it, it was, that's the time. Many of Morgan Freeman's followers are well aware of his feelings about race, baiting, and racism. Despite having lived through more challenging times, Freeman has made it to where he stands today with resilience and success. He made his stance on racism crystal clear during an old 60 Minutes interview, where he famously said, How are we going to get rid of racism? Stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man, and I'm going to stop calling you a white man, and I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. I know you as Mike Wallace, and you know me as Morgan Freeman. This statement carries weight, especially coming from someone who has experienced harder times than the current generation. Freeman also draws comparisons between art and culture, describing both as constantly evolving forces. It's undeniable that Freeman, like many others, is tired of being used as a political pawn in conversations about race, when instead he has positivity to spread. Perhaps that's why the panel on The View didn't give him more than five minutes. He fundamentally disagrees with the narratives they often push. Undoubtedly, it was the show's loss to sideline such an iconic, insightful personality like Morgan Freeman, someone people would love to listen to for much longer. What do you think about today's topic? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and thank you for tuning in.